People of God are those who have heard the call of the gospel, have obeyed that call from the heart, and are striving to live a life that is faithful unto God. They're not a group of people that have simply joined a club to which they owe allegiance and attendance now and then. They are a people who hunger and thirst after righteousness, according to Matthew 5 and verse 6, and who allow the principles of Christ to permeate every aspect of their lives. In Colossians chapter 3, Paul puts great emphasis upon this new lifestyle by saying in verse 2 that we are to set our mind on things above, not on things of the earth. But then this thought is expanded. He tells us in verse 5 that we are to mortify or put to death fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And then furthermore, in verses 8 and 9, he tells us to put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. But verse 10 says that after we've put off those things, we are to put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So today we're thinking about this idea of the individual Christian as unto the Lord. Now the last statement clearly sets the proper standard before us. People of God are to let God pattern their lives. Colossians 3.17 states it this way, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Now lest we miss the whatever, Paul then calls specific attention to various aspects of the individual Christian's life. Starting out, he talks about wives. He says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them, verses 18 and 19. In a similar passage in Ephesians 5, we read in verse 22, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Then in verse 25, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. While marriage is applied to the church in a figurative way only, we see that this private and domestic aspect of the lives of people of God is divinely regulated. Children are taught that they're to obey their parents in the Lord for this is what is right. This is what is well-pleasing to the Lord, Colossians 3 and verse 20. And we see in Ephesians 6 verses 1 through 4 that parents are to take their obligations very, very seriously. And Paul stresses the importance of this. In Colossians 3, verses 22 and 23, we read that bond servants or slaves, when this was written, are to obey their masters in all things, not with eye service as men pleasers, meaning when they're being watched, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Then Paul turns to the slave owner, to the master. He says, Masters, give your bondservants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Chapter 4 and verse 1. This principle applies today to the employer-employee relationship. Then in Romans 13, Paul writes that governmental authorities, they exist because they have been ordained of God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. But later he writes, He is God's minister to you for good. And for because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers. Verses 4 and 6. Now this was written at a time when the Roman government was very corrupt, was heavily taxing the Jewish people, and Paul is not commending the specific rulers then or now. But he teaches that the principle of civil government is ordained of God, and he calls upon the people of God to submit to civil authorities as God's ministers, needful to punish evildoers and to have an orderly society. When Jesus described the final judgment in Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46, He said that when we minister to the needs of others, he said, you did it to me. And when we fail to be good neighbors, he says, you did it not to me. And so on it goes. 
The New Testament is filled with exhortations for the people of God to live as to the Lord in every aspect of their lives. Peter put it this way in 1 Peter 2, verses 13 through 17. He says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Skipping down a little, he says, For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, yet not using liberty for a cloak of vice, but as bondservants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Friends, we want to thank you for joining us for our program today. We pray that you will give serious attention to these things that we've discussed and that God will bless you with a wonderful day.